That's Garrett Fox and the Budweiser shootout at Daytona International Speedway brought to you by Budweiser from the Hollywood Hotel and the pre-race show. You're going to head upstairs. That's right. Throw out the record books because we're in uncharted territory. I can promise you that. All right. So Daryl has joined Larry McReynolds and now Mike Joy going to call the race as they always do for NASCAR on Fox. Mike, you ready to go? We're ready, Chris, for the first NASCAR checkered flag of the stock car portion of Speed Weeks. They roll off pit road, and there's a great sense of anticipation and wonder. I wonder if we'll see pack racing. I wonder if we'll see cars pair up through the entire 75 laps. I wonder what will happen on pit stops. There's a lot of unknowns, Darrell. Could even be a Wilmer or two in there. Will my car make it? Will my car run? Will my car handle? Who oh, knows? 11 years and some things don't ever change. <laughs> but you know what? Fans have asked for a better looking car. This year we've got it. This thing looks like a race car. Got a nice new nose on it. Got the big spoiler on the back. Fans have asked for high speeds at Daytona and Talladega. We've got that. So folks, we got everything you asked for. Plus we're going to have some exciting bump drafting tonight. It's really, really, really going to make it real unknown who's going to win this thing. And you got a couple of things that don't always go together. Sprint race and strategy. Yeah, this is not a 500 or 400 mile race. This is a short sprint race on Saturday night. You don't have time to let things settle down. You've got to go and you've got to go in a hurry. And I kind of get a sense that we've got some teammates back there that have fast race cars. They're going to be coming to the front. Joey Logano and Kyle Busch. I think they'll be going up through their fast race cars. Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson's started to back. I think they'll be coming up through there. You heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. say, I think the wild card, that pit stop that these guys will have to make in that second 50 laps, and a lot on those driver's shoulders, how they get on and off pit road. Yeah, especially if they have to make that stop under green. They drew for starting positions, Earnhardt and Tony Stewart up front. It is a two-heat format. 25 laps, then 50 laps. Caution flags count. Caution laps too. 10-minute pit window where you can make any adjustment you could in a normal NASCAR Sprint Cup race. Double file restarts, green-white checker if needed. We've had that three times in this event. And thinking of three times, there's a fellow who's trying to win this for the third time in a row, Daryl. Let's see if we can dial him up. Kevin Harvey, kids at DW. You got a copy, buddy? And four, Daryl. Hey, man, you're, gonna, you're going for something tonight nobody's ever done. You're going for three Budweiser shootouts in a row. What's the chances? I think the chances are good, um, but you never know how these uh, restrictor plate races are going to shake out. So we're going to go like crazy from the beginning and run 75 laps as hard as we can run. And it's all going to be just about putting yourself in position with the, with the right cars at the end to, to try to pull that last lap move. You know, you've got one of the best records on the restrictor plate racing over the last three or four years. What makes you so good here at Daytona and Talladega? I think I'm lucky just to, to drive good cars, and, and we've been able to uh, have a lot of experience with the spotters, and everybody's worked together for a long time. So when he tells me I'm clear, I just turn left, and, and that usually works out pretty good. And, um, I don't know. you got to be lucky, too. So good cars and a little luck. Well, you got a, uh, a pretty good-looking car there uh, that... Nice new paint job. Uh, I guess people will be able to find you out there, all right? I got another question for you. Your nickname is Happy, are you? Uh, I'm always happy. Uh, we just got to thank everybody from Budweiser. The car looks awesome, and just can't wait to get racing. All right, my friend. Have a good run. We'll be watching. Thank you. Can't wait to get racing. That's the feeling of everybody here in Daytona and watching tonight on Fox. Joining us, our NASCAR on Fox All-Star Pit Crew, the best in the business. We'll start with our uh, senior reporter, Dick Bergren. Greg Biffle has a very simple strategy for tonight's race. He's crashed under the last three shootouts, so finish the race and be the lead car in a two-car draft coming under the checkered first. Steve Burns. Well, Dick Denny Hamlin won his race in 2006 as an unknown rookie. Since that night, he's won races, almost won a championship, and is now buddies with none other than Michael Jordan, owner of the Charlotte Bobcats. Little uncertainty tonight, though. Not happy with the transmission at the close of practice last night, Matt Yoakum. Without a teammate in tonight's field, Kurt Busch is more like the Lone Ranger. He was jokingly lobbying Greg Biffle, saying, I'm an ex-Roush Fenway employee. Help me out. But really, he worked primarily in practice with young Regan Smith. So look for the 78 to be the 22's wingman tonight. Chris Devoted. Race fans are seeing a lot less of Tony Stewart these days. Not because he's hiding, but because there's a lot less of Tony Stewart to see. After losing about 12 pounds in the offseason, Stewart is built for speed. A three-time winner of this event. He's also on the front row. Mike? Thanks, Krista. The 
lineup decided by draw. And there is your front row as we have a look through the Budweiser starting grid for tonight's 33rd Bud Shootout. Five wins between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards and Denny Hamlin, Casey Kane, Bobby Labonte, the 2000 champion, Clint Boyer, and Ryan Newman, the 500 winner in 08. Derek Cope won at 90, and Michael Waltrip, a two-time 500 winner. Jeff Gordon, Greg Biffle, talent all the way through this lineup. The defending 500 champ, McMurray, his teammate, Montoya. Rookie of the year, Kevin Conway, and always formidable Jeff Burton. Kevin Harvick going for the three-peat, and Kurt Busch, Mark Martin, and Matt Kenseth. Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, teammates way in the back. Jimmy Johnson drew first. He drew 23rd, along with former Rookie of the year, Regan Smith. That's the lineup, 24 deep, 30 drivers eligible, 24 elect to start. Lots of talent, man, just lots of talent. The Chevy Camaro pace car brings them across to the one to go sign. Tony Stewart carrying new colors. Mobile One joins Stewart Haas Racing for this year. And Casey Kane in the Red Bull Toyota numbered four, changed from 82 last year. Kurt Busch trades the deuce for the double deuce and the Pennzoil Dodge for Roger Penske. Bobby Labonte moves over to the 47 team. Kroger and Reese Toe Power tonight. Time champ, and here are our speed lines for tonight. The two car tango. How far can you go before things get too hot under the hood when you're paired up? Pit stop, synchronicity, no catch can man, no problem. Who will make the adjustments? And surface tension, as we saw earlier today in the ARCA 200, Bobby Gerhardt won the race because everybody had so much grip. They held the low groove, and nobody could break out and pass. And things that you normally worry about down here, you know, like tires, that doesn't seem to be an issue. Fuel mileage, that seems to be an issue. Speed, that seems to be an issue. Lots of things to watch here tonight. Yeah, and I just think you mentioned that this place has so much grip with this new surface. I think all of these drivers, they feel like Superman with their race car. They're going to try to go places where maybe they shouldn't go at times. They're going to feel like Superman. They're going to look like Spider-Man when they get all hooked together. And if you're looking for Jeff Gordon, new colors on his car, AARP's Drive to End Hunger will sponsor Gordon most of this 2011 season. Up in the 31 degree banking of turn three for the 33rd Budweiser shootout in February 1979. Buddy Baker led 18 of the 20 laps, kept his foot to the floor, and bested a nine car field to take home $50,000. And the second best that day, DW. Yes, sir. I followed him right. Just, I just stayed right behind him. Thought it was a pretty good move. Two rounds of practice, a lot of bump drafting, a lot of that two-car tango. What are we going to see in this first 25 laps? We're about to find out as the pace car makes the hard left turn to pit road. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2011 NASCAR season. The flag green flag get ready to go in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. has begun right at the front. Bernhardt Jr. with Carl Edwards on the inside, Tony Stewart with Denny Hamlin. But what we have seen throughout testing and throughout practice, that Toyota, like that 11 of Denny Hamlin, it can really give another car a good push. I think where you're going to see the speed is from cars that are behind these front four. As they pick up momentum, they will pick up speed and draft, and they'll be able to blow by these front guys. Here comes uh, Casey Kane in the four with the uh, Boyer right behind him, giving him a big push as they head off and it won. They caught the leaders. They split the two lead pairs and are going for the front. Kane on the inside with the yellow car of Clint Boyer. 
See, this is so different what we saw in practice. In practice, they'd get two by two by two, but you didn't have all these cars up there grouped up like we are now. They can't pass each other and take off like they did in practice. We're going to have some close racing. And I think what you'll see, we're starting to see it there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 getting that push by Carl Edwards in the 99. They'll almost run over that group in front of them. But they got nowhere to go, and that's the whole thing. That's why it's so different than practice. Threading the needle, Boyer. Stewart tried to close the hole and couldn't do it. Boyer to the lead. And Casey Kane in that four was a sitting duck, but now he gets help from Carl Edwards in the 99. You're going to have to really anticipate. You're going to have to anticipate every move you make because if you wait, it's too late. In the back, they're way three wide. Wait for me, wait for me. Staying pretty grouped up right now. I like what I'm seeing. What these guys have been working on for three days down here testing for yesterday all during practice two car breakaways get hooked up leave the field behind but i don't think he's going to be able to get too far ahead tonight making a move. We're riding with Mark Martin in that five. We talked to Kevin Harvick in the 29 car, and you can see with Jimmy Johnson in the 48 pushed them, these guys are trying to work their way up there in a hurry. You just, you can only go so, you know, when you got cars in front of you, cars to your left and right, you just got to wait. You got to be real patient here and wait for things to open up a little bit. Watch number 97 in blue, Kevin Conway. Whoa, Kevin. Oh, boy. He had a little too much help from Montoya right there. I think he was quite ready for that. Last year's rookie of the year. Conway. There's Jeff Gordon throttling up the outside. One of the Conway's best finishes came right here last year in the July race. They look coupled together, don't they? It's not the Chattanooga choo-choo, but it's uh, close to it. Clint Boyer leads them across to complete five of 25 laps in segment one of two. See a couple of teammates right there. Kevin Harvick in the 29 were riding with him, pushing his teammate Jeff Burton in the 31. They know if they'll stay just like this, that they may get right up there. Now we got a battle for the lead. Yeah, but especially when these guys get side by side like this, that is really going to suck that back crowd right back up to them. Legendary engineer Casey Jones drove the old 97. Casey Kane is in the new number four. Toyota and a Ford working together. Try to overhaul what is now a four-car draft. And if they stay Whoa, like this, Junior. Oh, Junior, man, he just put a move on, on Boyer right there. And, of course, Boyer. But you see what Junior did? Junior says, okay, I, I got you a little out of shape. Let me back up here and pick you up, and let's try that again. Look at the speed, though, of that 31. Jeff Burton and his teammate Harvick in that 29. Looked like they gained 50 horsepower all of a sudden. Well, they gained 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour faster than what you can run by yourself. Casey Kane has dropped back by himself. Uh -oh. And there's a problem with Kane's mount. He has lost the draft. He's got something from all his come to pit road. Yeah, he's got a bad, he's got a problem. Oh. Yeah, 10-4. He coming. Stewart's new drafting partner, Denny Hamlin. On the inside, on the outside, Burton, Harvick, Earnhardt, and Boyer. Three Childress cars and the Hendrick car of Earnhardt. Last night with telemetry, we saw these engines turn in 9,500 RPM. That's a, an amazing amount of RPM for, uh, for Daytona. And uh, a lot of times in the engines, Larry, you know, you'll try something a little bit edgy, a little less oil pressure, a little less of this. Trying to get the most speed you can out of the car. Well, as I mentioned, it's a short sprint race. No points, all about winning. Down to Steve Burns in Casey Kane's pit. 